Thank you very much, Russ. Um, you know, being the head of uh, mobile advertising in the UK, normally when I go up on stage, you know, I like to talk about the big trends, as Matt said. I like to talk about, you know, there are a billion mobile users now in the UK. And in the UK, we've reached 44% smartphone adoption. And that equates to around about 21 million mobile web users. And that connectivity is driving this industry. And you've got the big trends like social, local, and mobile all behind us. But for this conversation, this platform, I thought I'd bring it back down to the context and bring it back down to a location and bring it back down to something a little bit more personal, me. So I want to take you guys on a journey and go, behind, go beyond all the graphs and the, the, the stats and talk about something that's really personal to really show you how mobile is now interwoven into people's lives and how Google products are, in, are woven into people's lives and how you can start to reach them and add value to those consumers. So I want to take you on an adventure. I want to take you on a journey, on my journey home from work. You know, something I do every day, we all do it. So I leave uh, you know, the Google offices, and immediately I'm surrounded by advertising. You know, uh, a lot of agency partners in the, in the room and, and clients, and they realize that there's the one device on us at all times. In fact, 44% of us never have our, our phones out of arm's reach. So this smartphone in your pocket with all the computer power that David Singleton was talking about is always with us. And they can see that as being a bridge between their out-of-home advertising and uh, you know, the, the online world and how they can engage with consumers. So if I uh, walk down the road, I can see this uh, you know, amazing Kasabian ad. Now, we're testing uh, with uh, Sony BMG and French Connection uh, to use a Google product as the bridge between the offline world and the online world. And that Google product is uh, Google Goggles. So Google Goggles is our visual search uh, application. So we realize that people want to be able to search on their mobile phones by texting or using text or voice search, but also they want to be able to take just a, a picture and then get a full set of results back. So we're doing a beta test with, uh, with, with these guys in CBS Outdoor to see if that phone can be the bridge. And, and uh, if we go to, the, uh, go to the Wolf Vision, I'll see if I can uh, do an example. So here, let me get my phone out. So I open up the Google app, which is Google Goggles, and I just take a photograph. And you can see on the advert, there's the, the uh, call to action is uh, you know, the Google Goggles logo. And you can see here that it brings back, it's analyzed the picture and it's brought back two results. One is a product search, and David Singleton showed you a little bit of uh, the product search. And the second one is to watch uh, a live video. So if I click that, and uh, open up a browser. See, so it links me straight through to a mobile site, and uh, you know I can access some exclusive content. So there's, there's uh, you know photos, gigs, releases, and also the video. So if I watch the video, ah, oh, fantastic! You know, I really really forgot that I love Kasabian so much. So if I press that, but also I'd guess you know, one of the core trends we're seeing is that most people aren't going to you know, take out their phone and take a photograph or use a QR code. In fact, most people respond to out-of-home advertising just by doing a normal search. You know, they just see an ad and think, that's interesting, I'll carry on walking and type it in. So if I show you what some of those results could look like on your mobile phone. So I take you back and I just, uh, you know, say for example, if it was an advert for Subway, and as you can see here, what Subway have done is they've got a click-to-call advert. So this is one way you can reach consumers. Now, this can go through to a, a, a national call center, or it could go through to a local call center, or to indeed the store. So if I can check that my uh, footlong with meat, meatballs is uh, currently available on Italian bread. Or, for example, it could be Land Rover. So and now I'm currently in the market for a car. Not a Land Rover, unfortunately. But uh, here you can see what they've done is they're using hyperlocal adverts, adverts on, on, on Google. So if I click this uh, link here, it shows exactly where I am in relation to that uh, dealership. So and if I click again, I can go and get directions, as you saw already from the Google Maps, uh, Google Maps example. OK, so if we go back to the presentation, I've done my search for, uh, for uh, Kasabian CDs, and I found out that there's a, a, um, a HMV. So, 
Why are these adverts so important to us? Well, we know that one in three uh, searches on mobile is local. And we know that once somebody's done a local search, they actually take action. So you can see there, 41% have actually visited a business after they've done that local search. 36% have called that business. So when you do these local advertising, it does, it's really impactful and it connects you directly to, to, to the consumer, to that person, that individual. And uh, you know, I would say that also uh, would give uh, my top tip is one, to have a mobile strategy incorporated in your media mix, as, uh, as you heard Charlie talk about earlier on. And secondly, have a mobile destination. You know, there's nothing worse to a consumer than go through to a mobile site or a desktop site and be jarred by a, a really bad experience. Okay, so if we go on to the store, and now walking, I find a HMV. And the mobile phone now is playing, as you heard earlier on, a key role in how consumers are making decisions actually in store. This device is now a loud hailer to uh, you know, not just uh, other consumers in the store, but to the world about their experience of what's going on. And if we have a look at what people are doing with their mobile phones in store, we can see that 45% of us with smartphones are using it throughout the purchase process. 24% of us are using it in store to make shopping comparisons. And 21% of us actually changed our mind about a product based on that shopping comparison actually in store. So if we go back to the example, so I'm now in the, uh, go back to, to, to the Wolf Vision. I'm now in store, and now I've got uh, my Sabian CD. And I'm going to do that shopping comparison. So David, uh, David Singleton earlier on showed you a little bit of Google Shopper. But Google Shopper is our application that really improves the consumer, pro, uh, or, or is our effort to really improve the consumer's uh, experience of shopping and shopping comparison. So if I open up Google Shopper, you can see that it has a number of different products integrated into it. It's got Google Search, it's got Google Voice Search, it's got the ability to scan, and also it's got some of the offers that David touched on earlier on. So if I just do a scan of uh, the barcode, So it's recognized it, and it's taken me through to uh, a comparison. So you can see there, you know, the first link is for Zavi.com, and it's a local store. So it's for $7.95, so I can have a look, see uh, a little bit more information. So it's on Oxford Street. Well, that's a little bit far away from here. Uh, have a look at the price. No, they're the same price, so I've made the decision. Now I'm an informed decision to buy this from, uh, from HMV. So it's a great experience for me. So... If we go back to the, to the presentation, how do you guys get uh, you know, your, your products onto you know, things like Google Shopper? As you heard David Singleton earlier on, it's crucial that you start to use the Google Merchant Center. To upload product feeds, you can also upload local product feeds for local stores. So if you haven't done so already and you've got local retail outlets, there's a great way to reach consumers with the right information and empower them to make the right decisions. Okay, so I, uh, I continue my journey home. Pass by the takeaway, I'm not, I'm not tempted. And I go onto the train. So like most people, uh, you know, I use my smartphone uh, on the commute to and from work. In fact, 64% of us are using our smartphones during that journey. So you, know, you can reach them with our display proposition. So across the AdMob network, which has the largest reach of uh, any mobile network or display network in the UK, you can target people by time of day across particular content buttons, uh, 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 content bundles, across their operating device and operating, uh, uh, operating platform as well as their operating service like O2. But crucially, you can also target them via location. So if we go back, I'll just show you some of the innovative ways that you can start to reach those, those consumers. Okay, so if you have a look here on our ad formats, you can see there we offer a variety of different ways to reach consumers in that local context. You know, click to website, click to download, full page expandables, interactive videos, and also interactive interstitials. And we can do that whether it's on a mobile website or whether it's in app. So let me just have a look at one or two of those. So the interactive interstitial. So here I'm playing my app on the bus or the train, and as long as I've got internet connection, then I can click on the bus, and before I go through to the game, I get an advert for, in this case, Crate and Barrel. If I choose to, I can then interact with that, it goes straight through to their, to their mobile site. Likewise, you know, if you have a click to website, 
you know, on a content page on a, a mobile site, you then, launch, uh, uh, you then launch an interactive experience. So these are new ways that you can start to reach consumers in a local context, but also at scale across the country. Okay, so if we go back, so now I arrive uh, at my, oh, I arrive at my destination. And uh, before I get there, just to remind you, why is it important to advertise um, uh, on mobile? And why, you know, why are mobile ad formats so useful? Well, I guess it's because the vast majority of us recognize mobile ads. They're still getting cut through. And we take action once we've seen them. So you know whether that's looking for more information, contacting an advertiser, visiting that local store, or, doing, or actually purchasing. And in fact, 28% of us are now purchased on our smartphone. Okay, if we go through, I go to my front door. And, uh, you know, I've, I've, you know, it's been a long journey home. I've done a lot. You know, I've done some shopping. I've commuted. I've shown some apps. Dropped my mic. So, um, you know, I'm a little bit tired. So I remember, you know, that Subway ad. And if, uh, you know, if I go through to one more demonstration, okay, where, where is my local Subway? So if I uh, do a search, be there. Subway. And you can see there what Subway have done is because they've uh, initiated that local extension, they're also appearing across uh, Google Maps. And you can see there, there's one very, very close to us. So I'm within walking distance of that Subway. So again, activating and, uh, I guess, uh, reaching consumers for ad formats made for mobile is crucial in this space. Okay, well, I'm going to pass across to uh, my colleague to uh, give a summary of that and lead you on to uh, onto, uh, the qu a quiz. So if we go back to the uh, presentation, over to you, Emma. Uh, 